Hey people, Anthony, 4 before diesel. Um, this one needs a turbo replacement. Works out really well if you've got to do a BFE job at the same time. Well, not really well, because you don't have to pull these components out of the way to get the turbo, but it gives you a bit more room, and that's what I mean. So what we're doing, even though we're replacing the turbo job we sort of started first, we continue into the BFE, because it's going to get all these components out of the way. Not that we need to do this, but it gives us more room so it just makes it a bit of a nicer job getting the turbo out. So you could probably say this is a bit of a turbo replacement and a bit of a BFE video or a bit of a replace your tensioner video, a bit of a, could be almost a bit of a, re, re, you know, change out, your, change out your engine video because, you know, these are things you've got to do if you're going to remove, take the engine out, you've got to get the compressor off, you know, you don't take the turbo off. Do you? Well, you can take these things off, gives you a bit more uh, room. And it's a little bit lighter on your engine crane, you know, whatever. It's all got to come off anyway, right? Thanks for demonstrating, mate. That's beautiful. Look at that. So access to the thermostat's good, but we don't see problems with thermostats on 1KDs. So no need to go in and replace that. Just follow the videos and we'll tell you when it's uh, not quite right. Actually, they say 82 degrees on them, but by the time the coolant gets to the uh, temperature sensor here, 83 is what we see at the scan tool. So that's the difference there for people that want to be technical and go, oh, it's 82, not 83. Because some people like to argue and be technical. So we just want to be really clear there. 83 at idle is the temperature coming from that sensor. And that doesn't mean, you know, you've just been driving around high speed and it's vehicles running at high temperatures. You come to a stop and it's not 83 straight away. I mean, give it a few minutes to calm down normal temperature conditions not excessively hot not excessively cold because if it is cold it can actually run a bit below that if it's hot it might run a little bit higher but in your average sort of 20 degree temperatures you're going to see that idling at 83 but don't worry about the thermostat too much that's for sure all right i reckon a few bolts and we can just about slip this turbo out so what have we got left two bolts there and there's another one in behind there and uh, that'll be coming out soon of course, you need to remove these coolant hoses before you remove the turbo. Now, over to the water pump for a minute, for the people that don't know. This is the one-piece water pump. So when you go have a water pump leak, you can't just change the front of the water pump because the whole housing goes in behind the, um, the mounting brackets for the tension of the compressor, all that sort of thing. So to change the water pump, all of this gear that's removed now has to come off, which is why we invented the BFE job big front engine job makes it a big job but gets the vehicle sorted so that you don't have any inconvenient water pump leaks and we convert it up to a uh we convert it to a two-piece pump so that you know at a later date if it was to leak you can actually replace it but you should be doing the bfe every 150k And if you do that, you know, you do the time belt, the idler, the tension, all that stuff in behind here, all the bearings, and you just got a super reliable vehicle for 150,000 Ks, probably even longer, but 150 is a long time. So you spend a little bit of money every 150 to keep that Toyota feeling. Hey, and even Toyota don't tell you to do these things, you know, they put a one piece pump on there that's very difficult, creating a lot of work to change. Why do they do it? I really got no idea why they do it. So there you go. Toyota B came up with a, you know, a, a different system. Another really important random thing I th think I should talk about now, these EJR coolers, one of our workshop partners has had two of them with internal leaks. So he's either just lucky or, you know, whatever. So it's something you really need to be careful of because we've had one vehicle we just replaced the engine on that had an internal leak. So that's the only one we know of. I think I've heard of maybe one or two before, but I don't actually know directly 100%. So I, so hearing of a couple, yeah, it doesn't mean too much. I kind of go, yeah, nah, maybe. This 100% from the client, he had an internal leak. It used all the coolant, cooked the engine, 120 odd degrees. Um, now we've got a workshop partner that's had two with internal leaks. So we need to keep an eye out for that. Let's get back to that in a minute, because this is looking exciting. Not quite yet. We've got to get that turbo off in a minute. So look, how do you know if you've got an internal leak? Now, that's a good question, right? And this is where you've really got to watch the video, subscribe and turn the bell on, because I wasn't going to talk about this in this video, and I might talk about it separately in another video, but there's so many things we could talk about. And you probably think you're sick to death of all these sort of things, but you know what? 
there's always a bit more info there and it's only 10 minutes a day to really get familiar with what these vehicles engines look like and all this free information we're providing to help you do your own repairs because we can't do them all hey mate can you do all the repairs on the 1kds no can i do all the repairs on the 1kd no. if we get all our workshop partners together the people that can do it right can we can we do all the 1kds no no chance that's right so you guys need to help us out or you need to take it to the butchers and you know what happens with that it's your option um so if you can help us out watch the videos get yourself educated get some other people you know with you know we specialize in the 1kds because we think it's a really awesome engine just because we do that it doesn't mean that we're saying other engines are crap or anything like that okay but there is also maintenance that needs to be adhered to with this engine and all the other engines also the big bar to get that nice tight one undone yep so now back to this egr cooler that's really important how are you going to know if you've got an internal leak because what's going to happen is when i say internal leak for the people that don't understand you've got coolant running in here to cool down the stupid hot exhaust gases that are coming out here to go back into your intake system to mix with the clean filtered cool air that came out of the intercooler sounds like a pretty dumb idea doesn't it you just kind of want to get this and throw it over your shoulder but unfortunately you can't do that for a number of reasons let's not go there in this video or i'm going to get a dry throat from yakking too much but um, internally if you've got a leak that's where there's damage inside it somehow this is a quality stainless component made in japan and we don't see issues with these this is not from your cheaper makes and models that you regularly see problems with things like this so it's going to be difficult to detect and this is why if you get to know your vehicle you know the color of your coolant you know your coolant level you do a regular inspection on it i'd suggest probably every once every week or two even on our vehicles um, and the older they are the more you need to do this um, i'd recommend you know depending on the age of the vehicle so on my 120 for example it's done 430,000 k's I'd say open the bonnet at least once every week or two, something like that. What do you recommend? How often should people open the bonnet on older cars? Just to have a check the oil level, maybe a general inspection, look around, coolant level. What would you recommend? Yeah, I'd do it every fortnight. Yeah, every couple of weeks. There you go, right? So just have a look around. You're not going to see anything. You're going to go, I wasted my time. Lubricate this a little bit because they get all dry and bonnets get stuck. You don't want to get bonnets stuck shut. I'm going to do that right as soon as I stop this video. See, this is what I mean. You just need to subscribe, turn the bell on. I've probably mentioned it in other videos, but you might have missed that one. You could be new to the channel since then. Okay. Um, we're just getting these turbos coming off soon. So, But the EJ cooler. So the way you would know is if you've got absolutely no... So what are the coolant leaks? Let's talk about the 1KD for a minute. Let's not talk about the V6 because that's got a few more coolant leaks. But um, the typical coolant leaks on a 1KD for this video, we'll stick with 1KD. There'll be more videos on the V6. The petrol v6 coming soon so subscribe turn the bell on you might find a bit of an eye opener going on there um because there has been lots of engines failing and lots of people coming in that have got replacement engines it's just out of control at the moment to be quite honest bloody out of control you're just going to notice your coolant level slowly going down you may notice some moisture at the exhaust but then again it could be winter and you could have condensation in there so it's not a you might smell it a little bit you might smell it I don't want to say start pulling things apart, looking here to do an inspection to see if you can see coolant. But if you see your coolant level dropping slowly, and this is why you keep it on every couple of weeks, open the bonnet. The manufacturer actually says in the book to, I think you meant to do, what do they say? Daily checks, weekly checks. There's all these checks you meant to do. I think they want you to check the oil level daily or something like that. Isn't that something like that? It used to be that. I don't know if they've changed, but something like that, right? I know you're not going to open your bonnet every day, but if we can push towards once every week or two, something along those lines. If I'm on a trip, I open my bonnet probably every day, if not every two or three days. Like, you know, you might be doing hundreds of kilometres a day. Sometimes when we want to get somewhere, we'll be doing a thousand k's a day out on the highway. Um, at the end of the day, a couple of reasons you open the bonnet, let the heat out so all the mice and rats aren't sitting up there getting nice and warm, chewing on all your wires up here in these places you stay where there's lots of uh, vermin around. And of course, let the engine cool down, heat, let the heat out is good. And uh, so you don't get, because you get a lot of this heat, you know, see the white on the cap there? This is how a lot of Hilux caps are. Some people didn't know that. I actually had someone say, oh, this isn't my cap. Oh, you spray painted my cap or something like that. Like, how funny is that? Like all the Hiluxes are pretty much like that. I shouldn't say all of them, but not all of them, but most of them are. And uh, no, we don't spray paint caps and we don't swap oil caps around. So if you've got a cap on your vehicle that looks like that, it's your cap. Rest assured, it's your cap. But um, 
look, if you see a coolant leak, you know, well, you, more to the point, you don't see a coolant leak. If you see your coolant level dropping down slowly and you go, where's this going? Where's this going? And look, you do get a bit of that. I even see that on our Hilux 1KD, on our 120 1KD. In the hottest heat of summer, you are going to get a full expansion. It's going to push out any excess. And then you come to winter and, and cold conditions and the level's going to look low. That's why there's a low and a full line, but there's a few variables to that. Once it gets down to that low line, it shouldn't get any lower than that. If you're getting lower than that, look for your leak. Your number one leak on the 1KD is the water pump. So what else leaks cooling on 1KDs? I've forgotten. The water pump? What else? External water leaks. Oh, nothing. No, I can't think of anything, can you? Oh, yeah, if people are... Well, that doesn't leak. That's doesn't if, leak like if somebody's leak. taken it off and worked on it. and yeah, what. So people cause leaks. We can't help you with that. I mean, you do something wrong. But, yeah, coolant leaks. Um, water pump or maybe the water pump or maybe the... Because every make and model water pumps leak eventually, right? You can be lucky. You might say mine never leaked or you've done 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, whatever. Well, you got lucky, right? Generally, general speaking... They've got a bearing in them, they've got a seal, and they all leak eventually, okay? General, general talk. Like fuel pumps in petrol engines, you know? They all fail eventually, more or less, you know? It's a common thing. The in-tank petrol fuel pump on petrol engines, you know, they all usually fail eventually, but that, you know, generally speaking. Okay, so it's going to be hard to detect, right? So if you, if you suspect it, the problem to get this off as well, you've got to take off the fuel lines, risking contamination. There's so many things you've got to remember here. Don't take the fuel lines off unless you're replacing the injectors. I strongly recommend you don't do that. Now, I've given this engine a bit of a clean-up before we work because we're doing injectors. And this has never been off-road, this car. You can see there's not much rubbish in there. But that's where it accumulates. Mate, is this turbo off yet or what, mate? Well, it's going to be off in a minute, maybe. Let's see if you can carefully get that out now. Comes the turbo, look at that. Oh, a bit tight. See, it only just fits out, people. It only just fits. So, if you're doing a BFE, if you think you need a turbo, um, and you're doing a BFE, and you've got a few things out of the way, it makes it a little bit easier. It just makes it a bit more accessible. Okay, you're going to get some things leaking out there. Make sure you've got no blockages, debris. There can be reasons why turbos fail, so you need to check all the oil pipes, coolant pipes, inlets, outlets, and all this sort of thing and make sure everything is working to a satisfactory level. All right. That's what it looks like with the turbo not there. You wanna have a good look around. So a bit of a turbo video, a bit of information on turbo. Pretty straightforward, just hard to get to a lot of the bolts and some of them can be really tight and you could get yourself in a bit of a pickle trying to get those bolts undone and sometimes studs, things, nuts and bolts break off and round off and all this sort of thing. Turbo jobs, you know, that's why we, there's no fixed price. It's, well, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be thereabouts. And if there's dramas, obviously it can add a bit more to that. But luckily, we keep all the studs and nuts and turbos and everything in stock. So this tur job wasn't planned as a turbo. It just came in and turned out to be a turbo as well because it had the... Police followed it in. Anyway, butter bing. I reckon I've talked enough. I reckon we've educated you guys on a little bit of other information here. It's just another one piece of that million piece jigsaw puzzle. I think I've yacked enough. Bada bing, bada boom. There could be more videos on this engine yet. So subscribe, turn the bell on right now if you want. If you think it's worth it, getting yourself educated to save yourself money. Learn about your vehicle. Keep it reliable. Save some money. Do it yourself. Make sure it's done right. Thanks for watching. See ya.